My name is Ricky Rose. Um, I'm from Prattville, Alabama originally. Um, graduated high school in 2001. I joined the military shortly after that in February 2002. I was in Altus Air Force Base, Oklahoma. I was a still photographer. And then I applied to be a combat photographer as a senior airman. And uh, when I got to the unit, I was one of the youngest in the in combat camera at the time. Um, I was there for four years, did a couple tours in Iraq, and uh, was picked up by the Air Force Thunderbirds. And I was the Thunderbird aerial photographer for uh, four years until I was medically retired in 2012. Uh, I'm Mass Sergeant retired, Buster Finef. I'm a former combat cameraman. I did a tour at the first combat camera from 2003 to 2007. And then I went to the second combat camera and help them restand it up from 2010, 10-ish to 12 when I retired. The, the mission is really, it's an awesome mission. We get the opportunity to document things that no one else will ever see. From classified to unclassified, we go out on exercises. Uh, we go to Alaska, Arctic Edge. We'll go to do humanitarian relief at Katrina, Rita. We'll do tsunami relief. We go do, I mean, anywhere the United States military goes, we're there. Um, and it's really, a unique opportunity. Uh, you're on the road a lot, your family suffers. Um, but I mean, I, I can't count the number of places that I've been and, and the friends that I've made along the way. It's, um, you know, not only humanitarian stuff, but documenting stuff in uh, ground combat. Even though we're in the Air Force, we were. Uh, deployed a lot with Army, Navy, and Special Operations and stuff. Um, documenting the everyday boots on the ground combat mission was, was to me, probably my favorite part and part of the biggest mission. Um, you really feel like you're making a difference um, when you can come back and show that imagery and everybody's, ah, what, what happened, what happened? Hey, let me show you what happened. And that imagery was just priceless. And um, for the people we work for, I think that it's, uh, I think it was beneficial. Absolutely. Well, the best part about it is not only did you get to come back and go to the local leadership, but that imagery would go up Pentagon. It would hit the national news. I mean, a lot of times we were the only ones there, you know, and, and uh, I, I remember so well when I first time somebody asked me, you do what? And I'm like, you're crazy. Well, I guess there might be a little bit of a little craziness. I will never forget going with some Navy SEALs and uh, this one guy hits me. He's like, where's your rifle? I says, it's by my back. And he's like, well, huh? And I said, I'm the, I'm the combat photographer. And he's like, are you just going to take pictures? He's like, dude, you're crazy. Like that is, that's crazy. Like we're, you know, we're fixing to go. And I'm like, yes, sir. I was in the briefing and uh, just knowing that you're going into somebody's trying to kill you. I mean, no easy way to put it. Um, to have a camera in your hand instead of a rifle was nerve wracking at first, and then you get used to it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It, it was combat was it was the most rewarding, scary, and fulfilling. Uh, I carried an M4 um, carbine and a nine millimeter pistol, along with cameras and batteries and lenses and stuff like that. So not only did we have to carry everything that everybody else did, but we had to have our gear, our cameras, batteries, make sure you're not gonna run out of that stuff. Uh, Combat Camera does really good at training. So when you get in that position, it is weird, but you're trained. Like I, I felt I was really well trained to do that. But there are many times I had to drop my camera and pick the rifle up. And that's when crap really hit the fan is, uh, is when the Air Force combat photographer has to fire a few rounds downrange. It was, that was always wild days. The thing I get, that I used to get asked a lot and was how do you know when to put down the camera and when to pick up the weapon? 
All I can tell you is you'll know. Yeah. Uh, they, Once you go through it enough, it's uh, feel invincible. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> your common sense goes out the window. To me, combat camera, it gives, it provides the United States our citizens. It allows them to see their military in action in an unskewed manner. It's the epitome of being a videographer or a photographer. I guess to me, it uh, just the access, the access that we had behind the scenes, uncut, unfiltered, um, and being in the Air Force, being able to work with the different branches, I thought was really cool. Um, just coming back, you know, you'd had the worst day of your life. You know, we have been in a 12 hour firefight, every, you know, people got killed. But to be able to come back and show people some imagery and hey man, I got that guy that just happened to die today. I took a picture of him before that or something. And that's something that his family can hold on to and something that his brothers uh, can hold on to. And to me, that always, that always meant a lot, meant a lot. And we touched on it earlier. This imagery is vital because a lot of times you're not gonna have your media outlets embedded. Yeah, they don't, they won't take them because they, they're too much of a liability. And this imagery is critical to not only to allowing senior leadership to see, but also to let America mm -hmm. see what's going on. Yeah. Um, and it's a hard life. It's, it's a hard life, but it's, I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Neither would I.